Welcome to another episode of Let's Play Armored Warfare with Musashi. My name is Musashi, and today I'm looking at the EA3 AFV NERF. That's the early access third phase of Armored Warfare. And I'll just tell you right up front, I'm an AFV player. I don't necessarily need to get into one particular vehicle's camp and push the case of the AFV or the MBTs. There just was limited time to play the other lines. I became an AOV specialist by the sheer lack of time I had to go up other lines. I didn't want to skip a tier. I didn't use the ammo swap. I, I purposely wanted to choose something that wasn't OP, uh, at least thought to be at the time. So I wound up being an AFE player, sort of the redheaded stepchild of Armored Warfare as far as I'm concerned. I suppose I'm a proud counter-culture warrior at this point with the AFVs. They were already by far the hardest class to play. I'd played some of the other lines. I didn't get very far in them, but I played MBTs. I never played any TDs, but I played light tanks, and I played MBTs some. Didn't, I've never played one TD for one second, so I've got nothing to say there. I have played Artie a little bit, too. So I have some perspective that it's not just, I love AFV, therefore we, we must not nerf my favorite class. All that said, EA3, the AFEs got hammered. I mean, they were hard before, but now they're... I still enjoy the playstyle, and I still do okay in it, but as a class, as someone that's going to come into the game and play an AFE, good luck! Now, we already had the patch notes out before EA3 was released. I didn't need to play the game to see that this was going to happen. I predicted it in several forum posts. It was just obvious that an uh, autocannon AP nerf was going to hurt these things badly. Or maybe more to the point, it was going to hurt certain AFVs badly, and the other ones it was sort of had to be had to be seen to be believed sort of thing. There are three main nerfs that were coming. It was the autocannon AP pen, the view range was going to get nerfed, and the tracers, that which applies to everybody, but it really nerfs the AFVs because, especially with their autocannons, when you're putting out sustained fire, it's very easy to see where you're coming from. Uh, all of this, again, I predicted, but in the game, it sure enough plays out just like you would think it would, which is to say, not good for the AFV player. My personal take on this is the main battle tank players and others had complained about invisible tanks. That's where the tracers came from. They couldn't spot anything. They, they were blind. The view ranges were too disparate. There was... There was uh, uh, weasels and VBLs that had all this view range, and pretty much everybody else, even the other AFEs, couldn't really compete with them. And I didn't disagree with that. There was almost still too much black and white view range going on. Well, they fixed that. Now they've they brought the AFEs completely in line, and certainly they're still better at it, but not significantly so. But what's been surprising is what Obsidian has done is not just made a global 15 millimeter nerf to the AP rounds of autocannons, which is what it was stated it was going to be. I'm going to show you in this video that. What they've decided to do, apparently, is have highly individualistic stats for individual vehicles to bring them into balance, especially, at least with the AFV line, so that it's not an across-the-board change, as you will see here. First up, we have my beloved BMD-4, which I got toward the end of EA2, and I'm showing you the previous uh, tooltip that we got for the AP round, and you see it was uh, pretty juicy AP penetration. You see we had 168 millimeters of pen, 93 damage, salvo size was 27, uh, aim time's 2.2, reload time was 9 seconds. You know, there's some small difference between aim time and reload a little bit between some of the AFEs, but not much. It's, it's pretty inconsequential. The big number to me that matters all, all, over anything else is penetration. If you cannot penetrate with an AP round, it's pretty much worthless. You're just going ping, 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 ping. You're not doing a darn thing to them. You could do 500 damage with each shell. If you don't penetrate and it's not an HE type mechanism, it won't matter. All that matters with AP rounds is penetration. Not the damage, not how the salvo is. If you can't penetrate, it won't matter. So let's take a look at the EA3 tooltip. There's our BMD-4's uh, AP round with 155 millimeters. Same damage, same everything else, exact same thing. Just we went from 168 to 155. Okay, so 155 isn't horrible. It's not as good as it was. You know, against the side of some tanks, 155 should still be okay. You know, it's 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 not terrible. It's just, it's a loss. It's a nerf. And, you know, whether it was needed or not, it's not my point of the video. It's just to show you, okay, here's one vehicle, the one I have currently. Uh, I have BMD4s as far up the line as I've gotten. And I'm like, all right, 155. But see, the pen is, again, one of the three things that's a nerf. There's more than just pen that got nerfed. 
One of the other big changes was to, instead of have the recon module advantage be multiplicative, it is additive. So they've changed it from a percentage down to a flat amount of meters that are added on. Here's the original, here's the EA2 tooltip, where you got no bonus for capping, although you see it says 0% there, as if they already knew they were thinking about being able to adjust that number. But your view range stat was 25% when stopped on top of your view range. Now the BMD-4 is considered to have the reconnaissance package, so now what it gets is 80 meters on top of its view range, which, I don't need to do the math, is far less than what the 25% had been offering it in the past. Well, I take that back. What I should say is, for most vehicles, especially the Weasel and the VBL, the 25% stopped on top of their 505 view range was a gigantic number, far more than 80, uh, 80 meters of extra view range distance. For the BMD-4, it wasn't that big of a deal. Again, it didn't represent that much of a nerf, but uh, you did get in compensation a 10% bonus to capping, but that's obviously not going to impact anyone else. It's not really a balancing issue. That's just because the devs have stated that they wanted to have even more incentive for people to cap. So it's just a little 10% nudge to get people to try to get on cap. It also blurs the, blurs the lines a little bit between a uh, straight recon vehicle and the troop carrying types. Um, so, you know, I kind of like that. I like that it's being you know, blended a bit so that one does one a little better than the other, one, but it's not exclusive to that line of tanks. So I like the direction that's going. But a big nerf was this tracers business. To help people stop feeling like they're being shot by invisible tanks, they instituted the tracers, which again, I'm not necessarily disagreeing with, but the net effect is, if you fire a lot of rounds in a, a quick succession like the auto cannons do, you light up like a Christmas tree, and you're going to be found, and I've already been shot many times now in EA3, but guys just seeing where my fire was coming from, and bingo, it's not hard to locate someone. So what you want with the tracer rounds right now is a big alpha uh, even if it has a long reload, it doesn't matter as much. You want infrequent rounds so that they cannot track and find you. The more, the, almost the faster your gun fires, almost the worse off you are. Unless, of course, it's firing really fast and you're doing alpha, but, you know, that's, that's OP. Uh, the, the slower or at least the less frequent you fire and the more damage you do with that, with a tracer system at least, is most powerful. So from an, from an AFVs with the auto cannons, which was at least... 60 or 70, in some cases 80% of their firepower, whether it was AP or HE, you just got hosed, AFV players, hard. Now, we knew that before the EA3 was released because there's going to be tracers. What do you think is going to happen? But actually playing it in game, it is pronounced. You now have got reduced view range, in some cases with the Weasel, uh, Weasel and the VBL, significantly reduced, which again, I'm not arguing against. There was a little out of whack the way it was. But now you combine that with the tracers and the AP autocannon damage, you're not left with a whole lot of options. What's really happened to the AFEs is they've all become Bradleys, basically, which is not good. If you've watched my other videos, especially on the Bradley, you know I hated the Bradley. Uh, mostly because I, I want to be a brawling type player. I get how the Bradley wasn't awful awful, but it was likely to become awful awful when the AP pen hit, and boy is it awful now. But the point about saying that all the AFVs are like Bradleys now is that the Bradley's primary armament, its big damage dealer, is the double toe missile. But as I pointed out and long predicted, the missile tech is being defeated. It's, you know, there's always this, this battle between armor and, and firepower. And in the game, you, you might have these little windows of opportunity when the missiles can actually do something. But it's, it's negated very quickly as the uh, enemy or as the opposite, uh, the, the tech, becomes more and more defensive. So between the armor increase that happened and the APS systems and ERA and spaced armor, uh, heat mechanisms in general are an absolute roll of the dice, if not very hard to actually strike anybody with these missiles. I don't want to rehash the entire missile thing. Uh, they're, they're a cute novelty is what they are. If you're even lucky enough to hit them, which is difficult to do, especially with the Bradley with these two, you gotta, that guy's got to sit there and let you hit him with two to even realize any kind of DPM out of that. It was intended to... Well, I didn't mean to get into this. The, the missiles are hard to hit somebody with, and if you get hit with one, the chance of you doing any damage to anybody above tier 3 or 4 is pretty dang slim, at least it's certainly against most main battle tanks, and the things it's meant to hit, these light-skinned targets, like, like light tanks and maybe TDs and AFVs, 
They're too fast. They have to be sitting still or AFK to hit them with these missiles. I have done some missile damage still, but usually, again, these missiles are a long-range engagement uh, mechanism. You have to be a long way away. Only certain maps even allow that kind of distance. Your preparation time slows you down. Compared to just hitting somebody's bam with, with a regular main gun round, the missiles are extremely difficult to use effectively and do any kind of significant damage in the game, which is why I had so much trouble with the Bradley, because I was living in an environment of Stingray, Stingray 2s, the ammo swap. I had to live through that with my Bradley. The, everything about it just sucked, and the missiles haven't really appreciably gotten that much better. Now, when I got my BMD-4, now you've got the one big missile with the big pen, and I sure enough was tearing stuff up with it pretty good in the beginning, but again, that changed as soon as the other guys started catching up in tier. The sevens showed up. They had their defensive mechanisms. And now it was about a 50-50 crapshoot whether I was going to hit anything with it. In the end, fighting with the autocannons was far more pleasurable because it was more effective. You don't brawl and circle guys with a missile, so that's out. So half of your gameplay style is not missile-based anyway. And the missiles having that, you know, that effect where they don't necessarily hurt anybody half the time or more. And also only can, you don't even want to shoot it, but it's selected targets. So, okay, there's a whole lot that goes in with the missiles. You can tell I'm sort of, you know, missiles are evil. Missiles are no good. But the missiles have a 20 to 24 second reload. It, half a minute, the tactical situation is going to change so frequently. And by mid and late game, Good luck waiting 24 seconds. I mean, if there's fewer guys on the on the the map camping, and the the situations become very fluid. You do not have 20 seconds to wait for that thing to reload. Uh, there's all sorts of problems with the missiles. They're kind of fun, but really they're a bit of a novelty. So that brings us back to AFEs with the AP nerf have now relegated themselves to, in large part, having to hit things with HE mechanisms, whether that's missiles or it's HE rounds. Which brings us all the way back to not all AFEs are built equal at all. They're highly subject to the developer's desire to balance each individual tank, it would seem, now. I don't have the original tooltip for the Bradley in EA2, but this is the one you've been looking at this whole time is the EA3 tooltip for the Bradley. And you see its AP round does 120 millimeters of penetration. Yes, let me say that again, 120 millimeters of laughable penetration. It's at tier six, this is laughable. Now it's not laughable if you consider that you could pen some stuff from the side and the rear, except for the Bradley's a big fat pig that has a very hard time doing that. All the 120 millimeter, it was already bad before, but now that it's 120, welcome to missile land, Bradley, because that's all you're going to be able to do. They did increase the camel from 0.23 to 0.27, but that's not going to help with this big boxy pig. And the view range was, as we know now, nerfed for all the AFVs by and large. And it was for the Bradley as well. As you see on the screen, the Bradley got this troop compartment thing where you now get 25% uh, percent capping bonus with this 40 meters of, of viewing range when you're stopped. But you see, my friends, one of these things is not like the other. Actually, a lot of them are not like the other. Let's look at the Warrior. This is the EA3, I'm sorry, the EA2 tooltip. The Warrior had 198 pen. The Warrior did get the stated 15 millimeter pen nerf, but it only has AP. It doesn't have any missiles to fall back on, as much as I don't think the missiles do that much. They certainly are a fun little tactical option that at least you feel like you got it in your back pocket in an emergency or under certain game conditions. I mean, it's it's not good, but, you know, 50-50 shot beats no shot, which is what the Warrior has. The Warrior also has no HE autocannon, so it can't even plink away at anybody. The Warrior was a very odd, and still is a very odd tier 7, and many of my videos try to focus on how in the world is the Bradley a 6 and the Warrior is a 7. And later I decided that if you want autocannon fun, then you want the Warrior, because it had a hundred and almost 200 pen. But the, the pen, ace, uh, the autocannon pen nerf bat hit the Warrior too, and now it's down to the mid-180s. Which, you know, is a lot better than everyone else has got. But considering that's the only thing it has. So the Warrior got the 15 millimeter stated uh, pen nerf. Uh, you know, some, some got worse and some got less. The BMPs didn't, didn't lose quite that much. You know, it's all relative to sort of what your starting point is. But since this is all the Warrior's got, I love the pen on it still. But dang, it got... Ah! 
but also to prove to you, it's, it's all over the map here. Here's the BMP3M. So this is tier 7 as well. But this is the EA2 tooltip, not the EA3. So you see it does 176 a pen with 100 plus damage. So this is real good, right? Well, here's the EA3's tooltip for the BMP3M. We didn't lose that much. It's only down to 163 pen and keeps the same damage. So uh, this is good. I mean, this is still pretty good for tier 7. And you'll find, if you look at this more closely, I won't go through every last vehicle, the BMPs have largely kept their AP damage and the BMD line has not. You know, some are 20 millimeter, 25 millimeter, some are 30 millimeter, but the VBL, it also got hammered. Look, it's down to 90 millimeters of pen with its AP rounds. I mean, this is truly into complete laughable joke land. And what's happened now, if you look, the more you see how much these are varied and not across the board changes, as players, you almost have to be aware of which threats and which enemies are likely to actually hurt you with their auto cannons. The VBL is not going to hurt you with his cannons anymore. Maybe it shouldn't have. I don't know. Again, I'm not really even here to, to debate the balancing of it as much as just to show you. It's definitely all over the map in terms of what's happening to you. The BMP Tier 5 is autocannon. It can, it's much higher. It can definitely still hurt you. So now you've got to even think about which which AFV with autocannons can hurt you if you're in XYZ tank and you know what your armor capabilities are. The Weasel is still not bad. The Weasel's at... 130 plus for its pen so while it's not and that's tier six so 130 plus sure beats 120 from the bradley so i, I know it's a larger uh diameter uh round but still the bradley is so poor and the bmp series is not really that horrible the weasel can still hurt you a little bit even 130 though is not exactly stellar but here i will now give you the ultimate in ap nerf that's going to affect gameplay the new tier 8 bmp well bmpt the terminator right the ramka 99 i haven't even looked into why the heck it's called the ramka 99 but this thing only has 155 pen at tier 8 can you imagine when i saw this how shocked i was so maybe the global nerf hit it and i never got to see what its normal pen would have been but 155 is a joke at this stage of testing at least 155 is a complete and utter joke I've comp I've lost all interest in even trying to grind to get this thing because I'm not interested in the missiles. This thing has got a four salvo missile, kind of like the Weasel does, and the missiles look really good, right? But again, you've got not much speed. You don't have very good camo. You got this armor that's supposed to protect you. This sound like anything you heard of, like a Bradley? But just like a Bradley, the reason this sucks is nobody in the Weasel or even with the toe, with the two missiles that come out pretty quickly, nobody just sits there and lets let you hit them with all these missiles. Once again, you've got a long reload. Once again, you've got to even hit the guys to begin with, with the sort of missile mechanism. They get a warning about your rounds that they don't get from any other type of round type, other than Artie. Again, the missiles are fun. If you hit them in just the right exact situation, it's like, boom, whoa, check that out. Missile damage, woo! But it just doesn't happen much. So you're left with your autocannon, and you're trying to tell me the Terminator's got 155 millimeters of pen? I can't believe I went up this line. Ah! Okay, let me call myself. I have not played the Terminator, but a lot of people have reported that it doesn't actually fire its twin 30 mic mic guns. What it does, you just get an increased rate of fire, and that's what the tooltip looks like, what it does. So you don't get the penetration, but but wait, wait, look, you get 40 round salvo at 300 rounds per minute versus 200 rounds per minute for the other ones, right? That's the increased rate of fire that takes into account the, the twin 30 mic mic, right? But this doesn't matter when you can't penetrate them. It doesn't matter how many rounds you have. The, the increased rounds per minute and the, and the longer salvo size will help compensate so that your salvo duration to dump your clip is not quite as long as it would be otherwise. But it still takes a long time in the Bradley or it will take a long time in this to dump that clip to get up to the DPM where you're much better off doing fast, quick amounts of damage. One, because of tracers, but also like the Warrior, you want to dump that damage in them and make sure that one, you're actually damaging them and two, that it comes out fairly quickly. It's hard to sit there for three to five seconds while your clip dumps out because that also gives the other guy another reload all the while this is happening. It directly speaks to the DPM of the vehicle and how quickly those rounds come out. But do I need to say it again? DPM doesn't matter when you're not penetrating. Now you can say the Terminator has got this armor so it can brawl longer and it only needs to get a percentage. I mean, you can make up all sorts of scenarios. I haven't played the tank. I'll see how it plays out. But I don't need to play it to know it's got 155 millimeters of pen at tier eight with its autocannon. Uh, no, thank you.
the end result is the AFE's three big nerfs that they took on are not, not only made them harder than they even were before, but I fear many players are going to give up on playing AFE's, and I've considered stopping them myself. At this point, you have to be a real masochist to play an AFE. When, when there's the light tanks and TDs are cleaning up, the MBT's got a lot of love, and the, the AFE's just got nerfed. Have at it if you want to, but I am i would never go up the AFE line at this point. No way. Well, that's it for now. I'll see you again on the next episode of Let's Play Armored Warfare.